Hey everyone, it's Chris, and we are talking about damage using the two 2024 rules and seeing what uh, kind of damage the different classes can do. And we're finally going to go back to the beginning and talk about Warlocks. There's a lot to talk about with Warlocks because there's a lot of different ways they can deliver single target damage. And uh, before we get going, the first thing I'm going to ask is I am on the push for 100,000 subscribers. I'm getting very, very close, so I'm going to be a pain in the neck and ask every video. If you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Help me achieve that goal. I'm hoping to get there before the end of this year. Okay, let's talk about Warlocks and damage. And we're going to start with the Warlock baseline. So this is the... Uh, chart I've used to determine what is decent damage is for the last you know many years um, and this is uh, what I used to call the baseline I didn't call it the warlock baseline just the baseline because it compared everything to it and it is a warlock and we'll, we'll go more into detail but basically using the most obvious way to deliver damage with a warlock which is eldritch blast right and you do the the standard stuff like use agonizing blast and uh i have been mentioning in the past several videos that this line hasn't changed in 2024 and one of the comments i've had is that right here at level 19 we don't see it go higher um and with other builds i've been taking epic boons that increase damage at level 19 and they have been pointing out, I guess rightly so, that, you know, if you're going to give all these other classes a feat that increases damage at level 19, maybe you should do that for the Warlock as well. So that's a good point. We should, I should totally do that. Um, so I actually want to revisit uh, just Eldritch Blast damage with the Warlock. Um, and another thing I always have been mentioning is that this is a very simple build. Um, the, I have not really optimized it. I have not really considered things like what species we are or what subclass we're taking or other ways we might increase damage because there are ways to increase damage beyond using the hex spell, which is what I assume on this chart. Uh, so I do think it's worth looking at all those things and seeing how much we can raise these numbers and see how it compares to the other classes. That might not be the most interesting uh, line of inquiry, but I think it is useful and informative. Uh, but, like I said, there are other ways we can deliver damage uh, with a Warlock, and one thing that looks better than ever in the 2024 rules is Pact of the Blade. Pact of the Blade now allows you to use your Charisma to make attacks. It gives you reliable damage types, and you can get up to three attacks on your turn, just at level 12, which isn't too bad. Um, and so I did want to see how that would compare to using Eldritch Blast. i got to think it's going to be better, right? Though there's a third way that, you know, I didn't originally consider, but I I think I saw a Reddit thread a little while ago where somebody suggested that maybe Pack to the Blade isn't the best way to deliver single target damage with the Warlock. Maybe the best way to deliver single target damage with the Warlock, and they didn't say maybe, they were quite certain that it was, was to use Pact of the Tome. And what you do is you take Shillelagh, and then you take True Strike, either as part of Pact of the Tome or as one of your regular Warlock cantrips. And you just attack once per round. And then you use the Agonizing Blast Invocation with that to increase damage. So you're adding your Charisma to the same attack multiple times. Um, little skeptical about that one, if I'm honest. However... I thought it was worthy to at least punch numbers and see how it works. And it's definitely a novel idea. So I want to do that as well. That's going to be more than one video. So in this video, we're going to look at Eldritch Blast, see what we can do with it. Uh, so we're going to look once again at these base numbers uh, and see how an epic boon feat changes things. And then we're going to take a look and try to optimize it and see how high we can get these numbers using Eldritch Blast to see if Eldritch Blast is still viable in uh, 2024. Then I figure since we're doing the most basic one, we'll do the most novel one. So if, for my second build, uh, what I'm going to do, or I guess my third build, I'll do one Eldritch Blast basic build, one Eldritch Blast optimized build, then I'm going to do one True Strike base build, and then I'm going to do one True Strike optimized build where we add a subclass in. You know what subclass I'm, I'm thinking of because I think there's a very obvious one for a True Strike build. So we'll add that and see how that impacts things. 
compare those all together. And that's going to be today's video. And then in my next video, we're going to get into Pack to the Blade because I think there's multiple ways you can go up Pack to the Blade too. So there's probably four builds there as well. Uh, so it's going to take a couple of videos to go through. No more time to waste. Let's talk about Eldritch Blast with our base Warlock build. So this is, for the most part, the Eldritch Blast build I've always used. I put in a few more details here, but... You know, it's just so you kind of get the sense of what the character would function like outside of just delivering Aldrich Blast. Uh, so we'd be a Warlock. Uh, background, the one I would take in 2024 is Entertainer. It gives you the right ability scores. It gives you the Musician feat, which does not increase our damage, but it's a very good feat. Uh, and then my ability scores, that's what they would look like. And then my feats, that's what I would probably take. I'd take Warcaster at four, helps our concentration, increases our charisma now. I'd get my charisma up to 20 as soon as I could. And then I'd take some other things that I think are pretty good. Um, and uh, we'll finish off with the Boon of Combat Prowess. That's the one that's going to give us, uh, if we ever miss on our turn, we can turn it to hit once. Okay? The assumptions I use, we're going to assume there's four combats per long rest, four rounds per combat, one short rest after two combats. And then I'm going to use the Hex spell. And of course, you have to consider what if I lose concentration on the Hex spell? Will I be able to cast it again? I assume we're just going to be able to place Hex. Uh, it, now, I do think at level one, that's a little dicey because we only have one pack slot per short rest, which means that one casting of Hex, which lasts an hour, needs to last us two combats. That's maybe overly optimistic, but it's level one. I don't care that much. Uh, you know, once we get to level two and we have two castings per short rest, I got to think we can land it in on every uh, combat. So I'm just going to assume one casting per short rest. And uh, that's maybe optimistic, but that's what I'm assuming. Invocations. I would take armor of shadows first because we're not going to have a good armor class unless we do. And then we're going to have an okay armor class. Level two, we'll take agonizing blast on Eldritch Blast and repelling blast on Eldritch Blast. I'd never worry about talking about uh, uh, Repelling Blast when I do uh, baseline calculations, but my assumption is if you're a Warlock and you're using Eldritch Blast as your primary attack, you're going to take Repelling Blast. Um, at level 5, I'd take Pack to the Tome, uh, and I didn't worry about what I would be taking with it, but there are definitely good spells to take. And I'd take Eldritch Spear with Eldritch Blast, just because it's another way to enhance our Eldritch Blast, and if that's what we're doing most of the time, we want it to be as good as possible. Uh, I would take Otherworldly Leap at level 7, which has suddenly become an amazing <laughs> invocation. It wasn't all that great in 2014, but the changes to the jump spell are, are fantastic. So if, if you get it cast at will, it's great. Um, then Gift of the Protectors at level 9, that's a way to enhance our Pact of the Tome. Gaze of Two Minds at level 12, which is terrific. Again, it's not a damage feat, but it's terrific, or damage invocation. Level 15, Witch Sight, gives us True Sight. Uh, and level 18, Visions of Distant Realms. And yeah, they, these are all like good invocations, but the only ones that are really enhancing our damage are Agonizing Blast, and actually that's it. Just one <laughs> that enhances our damage. And Relevant Spells, Eldritch Blast for Cantrips. Uh, Hex will be our first level spell. And then I am going to include Foresight. So at level 17... Uh, Warlocks can take the Foresight spell. It's a level 9 spell. They can cast it on themselves. It lasts for 8 hours. I'm going to assume it's going to last for every combat, though there's always the possibility if battles are spread out far enough, that, that might not be the case. But I'm going to assume it is. Uh, and it's going to give us advantage on all our attack rolls. All attack rolls against us have disadvantage, and we have advantage on all our saving throws. It's a pretty good, solid ninth level spell. Um, and so we're going to assume that we cast it on ourselves. All right? Uh, and then here is the math, and it's there for you to see. Uh, I'm not going to go through how it's all calculated. It's there for you to see. I think this one is a pretty simple one. Uh, so we have 5.9 to 7.7 .7 to 8.3 to 16.6, 17.8, 26.7, 50.8, 8, 57.8. And the thing that I noticed doing this math is at level 17, when we get our fourth Eldritch Blast, we always see a jump. But when we add Foresight, that is a huge jump. From 26.7 to 50.8, that's almost double. Uh, so, yeah, that is a massive jump. Let's look at the new one on a chart. 
All right, so this is the old Warlock baseline and the new Warlock baseline. And there's, of course, the same from levels 1 through 16. And look what happens at level 17. Uh, it is a massive increase to have both Foresight and a Fourth Eldritch Blast occur at the exact same time. So it ends up with a very dramatic increase at level 17. And then another increase at level 19. So it's quite a bit above the old Warlock baseline in Tier 4. Of course, it's exactly the same before Tier 4. Uh, and so, yeah, that is the new baseline. Let's compare it to something else. So this is the new Warlock baseline versus the Fighter baseline. So this is just a Fighter, no subclass. They grab a greatsword and they attack with it. Um, and what I see is that the Fighter beats the Warlock all 20 levels. By lo uh, tier 1 and Tier 4 are fairly close. Tier 2 and Tier 3, they're not very close. The Warlock is well behind. That's not the place you want to be behind. Um, because a lot of campaigns never get to Tier 4. And although a lot of com campaigns do do Tier 1, they tend to go through Tier 1 fairly quickly. And you spend a lot of time in Tier 2 and potentially in Tier 3. So having those big gaps there... It just means that Eldritch Blast is going to be very tough. That said, like I have said at the beginning of the video, I didn't really do anything to really maximize my damage. I took the Foresight spell. But let's see if we were to look at Warlock spells and we were to look at Warlock subclasses, what could we do to increase these Eldritch Blast numbers and how much do they go up? And when we do that, how do they then compare to other classes. All right, so we're gonna do an Eldritch Blast optimized build. And I, I've called it Eldritch Blast offense optimization build because I will be taking some choices here specifically to increase offense that I might not otherwise take. Um, but I wanted to see how high I could get the damage numbers. The subclass, so when I looked at Warlock subclasses. I like the Warlock subclasses in the 2024 Player's Handbook. I did notice they don't do a lot to increase your damage. There's not a lot of damage options. I ended up taking Archfey because there are some damage options with the Archfey. Like you get all these Misty Steps and you can do damage to a creature if you Misty Step away from it. So I figured we can do that. And we can we can even use our reaction because uh, Archfey can use their reaction to Misty Step. And, uh, you know, deliver a little bit of extra damage that way. Uh, but it's not going to be a whole lot of damage. Uh, otherwise, build is looking largely the same. Um, let's see. We're going to have some new relevant spells. So we're going to take Eldritch Blast and Hex, just as always. But we're now going to take Hellish Rebuke. Uh, I also looked extensively at the 2024 uh, class list for the Warlock, and there's not a lot of single target damage options. Now, people have mentioned to me that a Warlock could take Spirit Shroud eventually, that can do more damage than Hex. Um, I, I'm focusing on the 2024 rules, though. So, uh, you know, Hellish Rebuke is a way to deliver single target damage. I assume 60% chance to fail a saving throw, and I assume at level 2 we'll be able to cast it once per short rest, because we're using the other casting on Hex. And the nice thing about Hell's Rebuke is it won't use up her concentration. Um, then once we get into uh, the Arch phase, specifically level 6, then we're going to be using our reaction to deliver damage in a different way. So now we want to look for other spells that deliver damage. So I looked at Blight. Um, and so Blight we could cast once per short rest at level 7, twice per short rest at level 11, and three times for short rest at level 17, and still cast Hex, and it won't interfere with our Hex, um, and it will replace our castings of Hellish Rebuke. Uh, it will also replace casting Eldritch Blast on the turn we cast Blight. Um, and then Mystic Arcanum that I'm going to take, Summon Fiend at level 11 is an obvious pick, um, because we can cast it outside of combat, and then in combat it's not using any actions, it's just using our concentration. So... You know, we won't be able to cast Hex. Summon Fiend is going to do more damage than Hex. Then I took Finger of Death at 13th level. There's not a lot of, uh, like, 6th or 8th, 6th, uh, 7th, or 8th level spells that deliver damage. So, yeah, we'll cast Finger of Death once per long rest instead of casting Eldritch Blast. And then Stealth Foresight at 17th level, we saw how that paid off. 
relevant subclass features at level six, we will get dreadful step. It's charisma times per long rest. And uh, I, I assumed that about half our misty steps would include a dreadful step rounded up. Um, and then I assume a 60% chance to fail their wisdom saving throw against that damage. And then beguiling defenses also can give us single target damage. It's once per long rest. And uh, the way that works is we're delivering damage to somebody, but it's based on the damage they delivered. And it's hard to guess what exactly, how much damage that would be. I am assuming the damage of beguiling defenses is two times our current level, uh, which was a dumb way to do it because it meant I had to redo the math every single level. But anyway, uh, that's what I did. Uh, so we start out with basically the same at level one. Then at level two, we add Hellish Rebuke, and now we're up to 8.2. Um, and then 8.7 at level three, and 9.9, .9, and then 18.8 .8 at level five, and 19.9 uh, .9 at level six. Then we switch to Blight. There's the math to know. Uh, Blight basically is going to add 1.3 to our DPR, casting it instead of casting Aldrich Blast once per short rest. Um, and that brings us up to 19.0. Then 20.7, then 21.1, then 22.1, and then 38. Big jump at 11. That's Summon Fiend. So Summon Fiend is adding 7.5 to our DPR, just assuming casting it in one combat per day. Uh, that's how much it adds. And then, what, 38.1, 39.4, 39.5, 0.6. 0.7, uh, that's just Beguiling Defenses, inching up. And then at level 17, of course, is our big level. Uh, so we're adding Foresight. We're casting Blight three times. Uh, beguiling Defenses is increased, and we got our fourth Eldritch Blast. Okay, uh, there is the... Uh... Oh, yeah, and what I determined right here. Look at this. There's our damage for Blight, 30.4. 30.37.6 is our damage for Eldritch Blast. So if we were to cast Blight, we would actually reduce our damage. Uh, so it's worse than, than just casting Eldritch Blast. So we'll stop casting Blight, right? Um, Finger of Death is still adding, but barely. And we end up at 58.9. Then 59, 67.5 at 19, and 67.6 .6 at 20. Let's look at it on a graph compared to our new Warlock baseline. All right, there it is. The top line is the uh, optimized version, and the bottom line is the non-optimized version, of course. I see a big jump in Tier 3. Um, that's where I mainly see it. Not a lot of difference in Tier 1. I mean, we're ahead in Tier 2, but it's not a lot. But Tier 3, there's a big jump. Um, and then Tier 4, I mean, it's higher, but it's not a lot higher. Uh, but we did notice that Tier 3 was well behind for uh, the uh, Eldritch Blast build. So seeing a big jump in Tier 3 is good. Uh, so is this actually good damage? No. No, this is still terrible damage, and I'm going to show you. So if you haven't seen it already, I did two videos where I looked at Ranger damage. And Ranger damage is worse than any of the other classes that I've covered so far in terms of single target damage. I need to keep hammering this home because people keep coming to these ridiculous conclusions that, that therefore Ranger bad. Well, not necessarily, uh, but Rangers are bad at single target damage in Tier 3. That is true. Um, well, this saw a big increase in Tier 3. I want to show you how this compares to the Ranger. So I'm going to take the two-weapon fighting Ranger, um, the, the optimized version we had, compared to the optimized version of Eldritch Blast, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so the red line is the Ranger. The blue line is the Warlock with Eldritch Blast, if you can't see the colors. This is the Ranger. This is Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast is way behind in Tier 1. It is way behind all the way through tier two and in tier three it comes out ahead but it you know it's not much ahead and in tier four it is ahead but here's the thing the ranger damage was bad this isn't better right in fact for most of 20 levels it is behind the ranger
So I just don't think it's good damage. Let's compare it to something that actually did good damage. Uh, let's compare it to... Uh, we'll compare it to the Shadow Monk. Here's what it looks like. The top line is the Shadow Monk. Uh, Eldritch Blast is more damage at level 19 and less damage at every other level. Uh, and look at tier 2 and tier 3. Like, we're talking twice as much damage. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not convinced we can make Eldritch Blast just by adding some optimization. I don't think it, we can increase it to the point where it really compares to anything else uh, that does single target damage. But the question is, what about other things Warlocks can do? Because Warlocks are more than Eldritch Blast now. So we're going to look at the True Strike build I talked about. So here's our True Strike build. Um, I basically took the idea that was on Reddit and then, you know, added a couple little things that I thought would also help uh, that weren't mentioned, uh, but I wanted to get the numbers as good as they could be. Uh, so we're going to be a warlock. Uh, I mean, there's our stats. I do figure that if you're going to use this build, you have to dip fighter or maybe paladin, but you need to dip something to get armor on yourself because you're going to go into melee uh, with leather armor or studded leather armor and then not focus on dexterity which i think is just not a good idea so yeah i, I figure you got it you got to do an armor dip um you know you could potentially dip cleric that could work too uh or even druid uh but yeah i just took fighter because fighter gets dueler or duelist at level one which adds plus two to one-handed weapon damage and we're going to be using a one-handed weapon so uh just seemed like an easy fit all right, there's what the stats would look like. There's what the feats would look like. And I added Sentinel and Charger at level 13 and 17. Uh, and those will both increase damage. And uh, yeah, Boon of Combat Prowess at level 20. And then uh, additional assumptions. I am assume Charger on 50% of turns. Uh, I've established that in previous videos. Sentinel on 25% of turns. Again, uh, pre-established. And... There's something I got to talk about. Yeah, so Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast with True Strike. Let's talk about that. Mainly, we're going to look at Agonizing Blast because it's the one that's relevant for damage. According to the Warlock, uh, this is the 2024 rules, Agonizing Blast, prerequisite, level 2 plus Warlock, a Warlock cantrip that deals damage. Choose one of your known Warlock cantrips that deals damage. You can add your Charisma modifier to that spell's damage rolls. Does this apply with True Strike? Because True Strike's a little bit different than Eldritch Blast. With Eldritch Blast, I mean, you fire the Eldritch Blast at the enemy, they take damage, clear as day. So here's the question, can you put Agonizing Blast on True Strike at all? Um, and there is debate on this. Even if you're sure you have the answer, just be aware, not everyone agrees with you. Um, so... Some people I've talked to have said definitely not because True Strike delivers damage in a different way and therefore for some reason it doesn't apply to Agonizing Blast um, or, or, or it delivers damage indirectly because you're delivering it through a weapon rather through, than through the spell. And I, I get that. Uh, then there's another camp that says you can use Agonizing Blast but not until level 5. And the idea is, is that until level 5, True Strike is just delivering weapon damage. And then at level 5, we are adding the D6 additional damage, and that is spell damage. That can be enhanced with Agonizing Blast. And then the third camp says you can apply Agonizing Blast to True Strike as soon as you can get it. Agonizing Blast, because True Strike is a cantrip. It delivers damage. We're going to add to that damage, and that's the way it works. Up to you and your table to decide which. I am not here to tell you which interpretation of Agonizing Blast you need to use, uh, but I'm just playing with the build, okay? So if this build is legal at your table, that's up to you and your DM, okay? Not up to me, but I am going to show you what the math would look like if it is legal. So at level six, we will get back to the blade um, because there are some other invocations it opens up, uh, specifically Eldritch Smite. Uh, Eldritch Smite, one thing about the Warlock spell list is it's not great for weapon users. When I first got the 2024 Player's Handbook, I was looking through and looking through the changes to uh, Pact of the Blade and thinking, wow, Warlocks are going to be better than fighters and everybody else now uh, because they essentially are getting fighter extra attack, 
Plus, they have all this spell casting and the invocations. But you look at the Warlock spell list, and it's really not made for a weapon user. It's just not. Uh, so I'm grabbing Elder Smite, and we're going to use that for damage. Otherworldly Leap, I talked about that already. Uh, Life Drinker, that's why I'm taking Pack to the Blade for the main reason. I already have reliable damage through uh, Shillelagh and through True Strike. Uh, but we're going to add some additional damage types we could do uh, through Pact of the Blade. But mainly, I want Life Drinker. That's going to give us an additional D6 of damage. And then we're going to get Gaze of Two Minds and Wish Sight and Visions of the Distant Realms. All right. Uh, and the only relevant spells are True Strike and Foresight. All right. Uh, and Shillelagh. I should have said Shillelagh as well. Uh, so at level one, we're going to be a fighter, so we're not going to have Shillelagh. Uh, so we're just going to use a Rapier. We have a good dex, and we get 5.9. And then at level 2, we multi-class into Warlock, and then we can keep on some nice armor, um, potentially use a shield, uh, and then, yeah, we could cast Shillelagh on round 1. We're not using a bonus action for anything else. We're not using Hex with this uh, build. Hex isn't that great if you're only making one attack around. If you want the most out of Hex or Hunter's Mark, you need to be making lots of attacks. Um, and this character will make one attack per round. Uh, eventually, they're going to have Sentinel, so there'll be 1.25 attacks per round. Uh, but anyway, we go to 5.9. We're the same. 5.9 and then 7.7. 11.9 when True Strike adds a D6 and Shillelagh uh, becomes a 1D10. Uh, and you can see we're adding our Charisma twice. Uh, and then we will add Elder Smite. I was surprised, actually, Elder Smite just doing it twice per short rest, that's 4.7 DPR. That's not bad. Honestly, it was higher than I thought it would be. Then up to 16.9, then 19, 22.4 at 10 when we add Life Drinker. Uh, and then True Strike scales and Shillelagh scales, and we go up to 25.4, then 28.9. Add Sentinel, and we're up to 33.5. Uh, 17, we get a whole bunch of stuff, and we're up to 38.2, and a bunch more stuff at 18, and we're up to 54.3. And we finish up at 61.3. Okay, so let's look at this compared to a base Eldritch Blast build and see how they compare. So, um, before I even separate the colors, the first thing you should note, or the first thing I noted and I was a little surprised by, is how similar these lines are. Uh, but basically, the blue line is our Warlock Eldritch Blast baseline, and the red line is is the Warlock True Strike baseline. And at tier one, there's not much difference between the two. And at tier two, at level five, the uh, Eldritch Blast is ahead. And at level 10, uh, the True Strike is ahead. Otherwise, they're basically the same. And actually, True Strike performs better in tier three, or at least most of tier three. Level 11, it's a little behind, but then it's ahead the rest of the time. And then Tier 4, of course, uh, there's a bigger jump for Eldritch Blast at level 17 because we did have to do a dip into Fighter, and that costs us at level 17. But we can see at level 18, we catch right back up. And I was surprised. Yeah, the, the it was performed way better than I expected. I expected this to be, let me show you that this doesn't work. I actually think if you think Eldritch Blast works, then you can hardly argue that this doesn't work. Um, so let's push it and see what we can do with it. All right, so our True Strike Optimized build will add the Celestial subclass. The reason you want to add the Celestial subclass is they get a sixth level subclass feature that allows them to add their Charisma modifier to any uh, damage spell that delivers uh, Radiant or Fire damage. True Strike delivers Radiant, meaning we can add our Charisma from the base attack of True Strike, we can add it again through Agonizing Blast, and then we can add it a third time through Celestial. Uh, and it's basically the same build that I just showed you, uh, other than I added the Celestial subclass. Um, and we're also going to add Summon Fiend at 12th level and Finger of Death at 14th level. They're a level behind because we had that Fighter Dip. Uh, and as I said, Foresight, 17th level, it's actually 18th level for Foresight. And here's the math. So it's going to start out the same, of course. Uh, and then we are going to add Celestial at level 7. So you can see right here, 
charisma being added three times. All right, and it gets us to 19, 19.1, 22, 25.4, 28.4. Uh, Summon Fiend has the same amount of damage it did with Eldritch Blast. It gets us to 39.4. 44.7, 46.3, 50.9, and we finish up at 75. So let's compare this to the optimized Eldritch Blast build. There is something I want to add here uh, that I had forgot to mention as I was going through this, but look at this right here. Finger of Death is actually worse than hitting with our Shillelagh once at level 20. Uh, I thought that was just kind of funny and worth pointing out. Finger of Death, we think of it as this big damage spell, and we're going to use this 7th level slot, and it's doing as much as a cantrip does at level 20. Uh, anyway, uh, onwards with the chart. So, if I look once again, they're pretty lockstep, right? Uh, so, uh, the blue line is Eldritch Blast, the red line is the uh, True Strike Optimized build, and they kind of crisscross all the way up right up to level 20. Uh, looks like the um, Eldritch Blast is a little bit ahead in Tier 1. In Tier 2, Eldritch Blast starts out ahead, but doesn't hold it. Then Tier 3, Eldritch Blast starts ahead, but then uh, the True Strike build is better for most of Tier 3. And Tier 4, they're pretty darn close, right? Like, uh, the, the True Strike ends up ahead, but not much different. So let's look at this True Strike build because we do see a jump at Tier 3, and that is good, right? Tier 3 is where we want to jump. Let's take a look at, and I figured the best thing to compare it to is another class that only attacks once, and that's the Rogue. So we have damage for a Rogue Assassin attacking once per turn. We have damage for a Warlock with Shillelagh and True Strike attacking once per turn. Let's see how they compare. So there you go. Uh, so the blue line is the assassin. If you are colorblind, the blue line is the top line. And it's the top line for all 20 levels. Um, now, there are a lot of levels where it's not... Like, if I look at this, they're not disastrously apart, right? It's not like when we were looking at the ranger, right? But I will say where I see the biggest gap, and the gap is pretty big. Pretty big, regardless of how it looks, maybe on the screen. Uh, the biggest gap is from levels 4 through level 11, and it's pretty consistent all the way through there. That's when people play D&D, right? <laughs> you know, the fact that they're pretty close at level 19 is not actually all that relevant. The fact that they're not very close at level 8 is fairly relevant. And I mean from 19.1 to 28.6 um, at level 5 from 11.9 to 20.1. It's almost double, right? That's almost double. Level four is more than double. 7.1, 16.1, okay? So the gap is actually quite large in those tiers, and those are the tiers people play at. So I'm sorry. I don't think True Strike Warlock is the way to go if you want to deliver single target damage, though it might be better than Eldritch Blast. Um, it's pretty close. But it might be better than Eldritch Blast. But it's definitely not as good as other classes are. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and compare it to the to the Ranger, to the two-weapon fighting Ranger, and see how it compares. The blue line is the Fey Wanderer. And in Tier 3, uh, True Strike actually outdamages the Fey Wanderer. But the Fey Wanderer's awful in Tier 3. Awful, awful, awful. Tier 1 and Tier 2 is where I said the Ranger does okay. And just look at it compared to the Warlock, right? Um, and overall, I would say, if I had to choose one of these two for my next campaign, I'd take the Ranger damage, because through the most of the campaign, it's going to be out-damaging the Warlock by a fair amount. Uh, and in some cases, I mean, look at level 5, 11.9 to 27.3, right? Um, that's well over double the damage. Uh, so yeah, uh, the Warlock... At least in regards to Eldritch Blast and Two Strike with Shillelagh, is the worst damage I've seen so far. Worse than the Ranger. But I haven't looked at Pact of the Blade, and I suspect Pact of the Blade is going to perform much better. Um, I have not done DPR calculations for Pact of the Blade yet, but I suspect it's going to be much better. There are two ways I can see making a uh, 
a build with Pact of the Blade, the first is to focus on charisma, and the second is to not focus on charisma, because you're going to want some feats that are not going to increase charisma. Uh, so we should see what it looks like with a charisma-focused warlock and with a non-charisma-focused warlock, and chart it all and see what it looks like. And that's what I'll be doing in my next video. I hope you will join me for that. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D &D is for everyone. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.